Climate Central is an independent nonprofit research and journalist organization based in Princeton. Um, we don't take any policy positions or, and we don't advocate, but we, um, we, we focus on the research and provide support to, to any group who, who contacts us. Um, our, our Sea Level Rise program does extensive research um, resulting in peer-reviewed publications, um, and that serves as the baseline for our, for our web tools. Um, in any case, you should be able to see the, the Risk Finder web tool here. You can actually go to this shortened URL, riskfinder.org, which will redirect you to the search box. And, and, and what you can do here is um, search for your location. We, uh, and Ricky, maybe you have a sense of uh, what location would be good for, the, for this group. Uh, otherwise, I might search for Fort Lauderdale or something like that. Uh, you know, I would say probably, uh, you know, any of the coastal area, but, you know, California, Florida, or most of our, uh, yeah. I would okay. say, yeah. Yep. Great. So I'll just start, uh, what it should work. Um, and I should say that our web tool is used by planners and stakeholder groups and ag advocacy groups, researchers. And when people download stuff from our tool, they tell us how they intend to use it. So they tell us they're using it for screening level planning, for communication, for education, uh, and other, uh, other, uh, purposes. So you notice as you search for a location, um, it's similar to Google, and it'll actually give you um, different examples of the types of area types that we analyze. So you'll see immediately you can search and look at Florida counties, postal codes, congressional districts. So you could start typing for Fort Lauderdale and maybe decide to look at, for counties in Florida, and it'll give you a list of counties. You can, sh you can choose what you're interested in. Um, I'll go to Hillsborough County, which uh, uh, St. Pete is, is, is within. Um, and, and within this new long scrolling page basically is the functionality of our, of our entire previous web tool. So it's basically place-based um, for any county, zip code, congressional district, um, and other types of uh, area types, uh, you can get a similar page. And what we do at the top is we give you a summary of uh, essentially how much sea level you can expect by 2050, 2100, we give you um, similar analysis to, to, to our web tool from the last time, basically telling you what's, what's at risk at five feet. So that could be five feet from, or three feet, whatever you choose on the left side of the screen. So that could be three feet from, from sea level rise in the longer term. It could be from a, a three foot flood or a five foot flood tomorrow. It could be from a combination of those. We're simply giving you analysis of what is sitting on land below a certain water level. So in this case, in Hillsborough County, there are 34,000 people sitting on that land. And each of these data sets we, we collected from mostly federal data sources. So for population, we use census data, data um, uh, for uh, power plants, EIA, for all kinds of uh, other types of infrastructure we use. Um, a range of federal data sets. And what we're essentially doing is we, we've we intersected that data with NOAA's LIDAR data and to give you screening level analysis. Um, so just to jump through the modules quickly, um, I'll come back to these buttons, but they give you, you can download uh, this kind of information into fact sheets and other types of materials. But you can scroll down to the when are the risks, and this gives you projections. Um, and, the, and we provide sea level and flood risk projections integrating Sea level uh, scenarios for different tide gauges across the country. In this case, we're looking at the risk of a three foot flood, or if I move the water slider up to five feet, for example, or four feet. What's the risk of a four foot flood at the, no the closest NOAA tide gauge, which is at the St. Pete water level station? So um, our analysis tells us that based on a, an intermediate sea level rise projection by, uh, by NOAA uh, within the US, the US uh, NCA. Um, assessment, there's about a 62% chance of a four-foot flood by, 20, by 2040, um, uh, an 82% by 2050, and so on. Um, and if you go to a faster sea level rise projection, you can see how the, the risk can go up or down depending on, on where you are, and that will vary depending on the tide gauge you're using. Um, what's interesting is if you take out sea level rise from the uh, from the equation, you can see how, uh, especially in Florida, the risk of flooding um, jumps way down. Um, 
it, well, it jumps down somewhat. In other parts, it jumps down much, much further. Um, and in, in, this, in the following section down here, we provide about 100, uh, we, we provide the analysis for about 100 different variables in terms of what's at risk at different water levels. So you can see population broken down by different population types, all based on census data. All of our methods and sources are, are listed in the web tool itself. Um, you can look at buildings. We have homes, property value, medical facilities. Um, so just jumping around a little bit, uh, if you wanted to go to uh, San Francisco or something like that, you could go there, scroll down, and see what's at risk in San Francisco. Um, infrastructure, how many ferry stations, looks like passenger stations, contamination risks. If you're looking for analysis for an entire state, you could just type in Florida, and you could simply see how many um, hazardous waste sites are at risk at five feet in Florida, 1,407 at seven feet and over 3,000, it's at, uh, anyway, at, at a higher water level. Um, and so you basically can slice the data by any area type and by any kind of variable to get, to get what, you, what you're interested in. And then you can download an Excel file, you could download a PowerPoint slide of, of what you're interested in. So um, in the map below here, you can actually compare Florida cities by um, variable. So in this case, we're looking at buildings at risk. So which city in Florida has the most buildings at risk at eight feet? Fort Lauderdale does. At four feet, it may be a different city, Miami. Um, and so you could look at population to see what's at risk from a four foot flood or, four, or three feet of sea level rise in, uh, in Florida. It looks like Miami has the most number of people there. Um, and you can even look at it by congressional district. So here we are. Congressional district 23 looks like it is the most, the most exposure for population at three feet and five feet even. Um, and I guess uh, district 26 has the most for 10 feet. So there's all kinds of uh, kinds of information you can uh, export into PowerPoint slides or images that you can import into your studies or communication materials. We also have a reducing your risk section where we send um, our visitors to Florida resources in their, in their state and we give them actions they can take to reduce their flood risk in their location. Um, and I'll show you briefly the kinds of materials you can download. So say you wanna go uh, produce a, something you can share for Florida or for a zip code within Florida. So let's go um, choose a county, um, Broward County, and you could even choose a zip code within that county if you wanted, uh, or a town within it. Um, so we're comparing zip codes here. So this is the page for the specific zip code. It tells you the number of what's at risk there. And then you can download a fact sheet for that zip code or for that congressional district. And I just downloaded a couple quickly ahead of time. So here's a, it's basically a two page fact sheet that summarizes what's in the tool, um, gives you what's at risk, talks about how uh, sea level rise is already increasing coastal flooding, gives sea level rise projections here, the ranges, gives the risk of certain flood levels here. So you could, you could print out a fact sheet for five feet or three feet, or whichever water level you feel is appropriate. And on the back we have question uh, answers to frequently asked questions like what causes sea levels to rise how does sea level rise affect flooding what does the future hold these kinds of things uh, so these are available for, for any location along the coast um, we also have more detailed um, brief report reports for each location that, that provide more technical details and methods um, and those are available by clicking the brief report button here and we have the state reports for, for most of the coastal states that provide all of our scientific underpinnings and methods. Um, so uh, I might stop there. Um, I did want to okay. just want to mention one more thing that we still have our risk zone map, which you might be familiar with. If you, if you come to our web tool and you click on this full feature map, you can actually come into our other parallel web tool and um, zoom in even further um, to your neighborhood or your county and choose different overlays like population density. Um, <clears throat> if, you, if you search for uh, Boston, for example, 
Um, it gives you the population density or ethnicity, um, income levels, property layers, and social vulnerability layers. And you can zoom in, set your water level, and download an image uh, of the map that you could use within your uh, materials. We're, we'll, we'll soon have PowerPoint slides for the maps as well. Um, so I just wanted to give you a quick overview of the, this public free web tool and, and, and also offer to support the use of the tool if you have any questions about it in the future. 